So our first speaker is uh, Laura Finger, and the title of her talk is Using Diffusion Tensor Imaging to Find Optimal Deep Brain Stimulation Targets for the Treatment of Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. Thank you, Dr. Caldwell. Um, so just to provide you with some background on my project, um, Obsessive Compulsive Disorder, or OCD, is a neuropsychiatric condition that's characterized by obsessions and compulsions. Obsessions are recurrent and persistent thoughts or urges, and those are followed by compulsions, which are repetitive behaviors or mental rituals. Neuroimaging studies have shown that patients with OCD have a hyperconnectivity between the orbital frontal cortex, a part of the prefrontal cortex here, and the striatum. The severity of OCD is measured using the Yale-Brown Obsessive Compulsive Scale, or white box for short, and OCD is usually treated with cognitive behavioral therapy and pharmacotherapy. However, about 35% of patients fail to respond to treatment at all and are deemed treatment resistant or treatment refractory, and about 10% remain severely ill and are candidates for neurosurgical input. Key brain stimulation, or DBS, involves neurosurgical implantation of electrodes into the brain. These electrodes are connected to an extension wire, which is connected to a stimulator placed in the chest. And DBS delivers high-frequency stimulation to specific areas in the brain, but the mechanism is not fully understood. And DBS is an alternative to ablation, which is permanently destroying brain tissue with the laser. So unlike ablation, DBS is largely reversible because it can be turned off, it's titratable, more precise, and destroys less brain tissue overall. And past studies have shown that DBS reduces that hyperconnectivity in patients with treatment-resistant OCD. However, due to the small number of patients with treatment-resistant OCD being treated with DBS, about 150 patients in the world, there's little consensus on the best target for stimulation. Multiple brain targets have been investigated, including the anterior limb of the internal capsule, the nucleus accumbens, and the ventral capsule and ventral striatum, which are all in a similar anatomical location seen here. So to attempt to fill that gap, I used diffusion tensor imaging, or DTI, as a way to visualize white matter tracks in the brain. Tracks connect cortical and nuclear areas, and we can use it to determine what tracks or areas in the brain are being stimulated in DBS. So that brings us to my objective and hypothesis. The purpose of this study is to use DTI to determine the optimal target for DBS in patients with treatment-resistant OCD. And we hypothesize that DBS will target unique fiber tracks in each patient, and that those different track profiles will correlate with each patient's clinical response. So my project has two main components, the first being the clinical assessments or diagnostic grading scales. And we can look at those scores before and after surgery. And then the second component being the imaging, and that allows us to see the areas and tracks being stimulated by DBS. Then we are trying to put the two together and see if there's a correlation between each component. So the first component of my project is that clinical assessment or diagnostic grading scales. And patients are assessed using the Y box, which again measures OCD symptom severity, and it ranges on a score from zero to 40. And that has different subcategories with ranges here. And we look at the DBS, or sorry, we look at the Y box score before DBS surgery as a baseline, and all the patients are within this extreme category. And because they're treatment resistant, they're not really budging from that category. Then after DBS surgery, I looked at the Y-box scores at these different time points. So what we found from that first part, um, graph A here shows our Y-box score for all of our patients and percent change from baseline. So this black bar here represents baseline. And we can see that our patients on average have had a 44% decrease in their OCD, which according to literature, 25 to 35% or above is considered an effective treatment. And this is huge because these are patients that are not responding to treatment at all before surgery. Then graph B here shows we have each of our patients on the x-axis, we had five in total. And on the y-axis, we have the days required to obtain optimal benefit. So some patients responded to DBS in less than 100 days, while others took longer to respond. So this is just showing that it's not the same for every patient, and it can vary. Then finally, on graph C here, we have each of our patients listed here, and then days post-stimulation and the percent change from pre-surgery baseline. So again, that black bar is baseline, and we can see that each patient has had a significant decrease in their OCD symptom severity as measured by that Y box. Then the other component of my project is the imaging, 
So using a specific program, I found DBS electrodes in each patient's imaging. And then I could recreate those electrodes within a 3D brain space seen here. From there, I generated a VTA, or volume of tissue activated, which is this red bubble. And that's using the specific stimulation settings that I can plug in for each patient at those different time points post-surgery. Then from there, I can get an area of this bubble and segment it out and plug it into another program to see the specific white matter tracks going through it. So here's our VTA here and our white matter tracks using that DTI. And track profiles change based on the volume of tissue activated or VTA created from those specific stimulation settings. So these are the results from that second part. On graph A here, we have the VTA area, which is that red bubble, and then our amplitude measured in volts. And as the voltage goes up, so does our area, which is what we'd expect. And graph B and C here show our DTI coefficients, FA and MD. And they're within a certain range for all of the patients, but there's not really a correlation. But each individual uh, value shows that we are stimulating different tracks in each patient. So then I put the two parts of my project together to see if there's a correlation. So on the x-axis here, we have our y-box, our OCD symptom severity, and then on the y-axis, we have our DTI coefficients with our FA and MD again. And we can see that there's a slight correlation with our increasing or decreasing y-box score. And the main point is that changing the VTA with the stimulation settings results in a change in the Y-box score and DTI coefficients. So here with a higher Y-box in these settings, we have this track profile versus a lower Y-box. In these settings, we have this track profile. So in conclusion, changes in DTI coefficients suggest that the modification and stimulation parameters that led to clinical benefit was associated with activation of distinct fiber populations and thus different neural pathways in each patient. Thus, our hypothesis is accepted in saying that DBS targets unique fiber tracks in each patient and that those different track profiles will be indicative of each patient's clinical response, which can lead to personalized care in medicine and shows that patients with tumor refractory OCD that there's not a specific optimal target that applies to everyone. And I'd just like to acknowledge everyone on the slide. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you, Laura, so much. What a great presentation and project. Um, if anybody has any questions, you can just put it in the chat box right now. We have a few minutes for questions. Um, I have a question right now. Um, if there wasn't any time constraints for this project, um, what would you do next in this project? Um, so next, we could look at segmenting out specific tracks that we know that are associated with OCD. So for example, the median forebrain bundle. Um, and then we could determine how much of the VTA, that volume of tissue activated is connected with um, or part of that specific track profile and get even more data that we can analyze based on that. Awesome, thank you. Uh, we have another question. Um, are there any less invasive treatment options? Um, so for this patient population, um, they are treatment resistant to other things. Um, so the other option would be ablation, um, but I, there's probably others that I'm unaware of, but DBS has been the most promising treatment for this population. Awesome. Um, do different tracks correlate with different types of OCD? Um, I am not sure. sure of that. Um, That's okay. Yeah.